What's up guys, this is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this video we're going to look at some of the highlights from New York Comic Con. The first thing I want to look at is the Play Arts Kai display for Master Chief and Locke. These guys both look really good. They still have a little bit of stylization to them, but for the most part they're very accurate and they look a lot less uh, elongated as some of the Play Arts Kai figures have. So I'm really looking forward to these. I'm excited. The armor looks good. Most of the range of motion looks good too, so I'm hopeful that these are going to turn out nicely. We also have the Batman vs. Superman figures, and while they do look good, they still kind of look stylized and have that kind of uh, elongated torso and kind of lanky arms. I don't know, there's something about them that does look a little bit off, but as far as the details go and the likenesses, they look pretty darn good. Especially the armored Batman. I really like the way this is shaping up so far. I'm excited to see how it goes. As far as likenesses go, the one that doesn't really hold up is the Gal Gadot Wonder Woman. She doesn't exactly look right. But the rest of the figure looks okay, so who knows, maybe it'll turn out just fine. Can't say for now though. We also have some SH Figure Arts Ninja Turtles, which were kind of a surprise. These are the cartoon-based figures, and I personally grew up on the cartoon, so I'm looking forward to these. They look like they're going to have a lot of nice articulation with good range of motion. All new molded parts, obviously, and they're going to have unique hands and heads and things like that. So I'm pretty excited about these, actually. Bowser, on the other hand, is something we've been looking forward to for a long time. But other than some finer details, the Jack specific version looks like it's going to be taking the cake. This Bowser is only about the same size as Mario and his articulation is incredibly limited based on this figure. It is still early in production so who knows, it could change. But as of right now, Spiny and Lakitu and the Hammer Brothers look way better. I mean, they're smaller, more accessory style figures. Uh, not necessarily that much smaller though, considering how little Bowser is as you can see here. But the accessory style guys look good. This Bowser should be a much bigger, more imposing figure and it's just not so far. It's kind of disappointing. Here we have an all new War Greymon, so all of you Digimon fans should be pretty excited about that. It looks really good and I think you guys are going to be pretty pleased with it when you see it in person. Here we have the Ronin and Boba Fett, which just looks fantastic. If anybody's design suits this particular stylization, it's this one. Very, very nice looking figure. And right here we have a guy I'm not too familiar with, but it's a darn cool looking figure from Sentinel. And I think all of you that are familiar with it are going to want to pick this up. It just looks really, really nice. We have the Storm Collectibles Mortal Kombat figures here, and while they do have the added articulation that we haven't seen before, I'm a little bit worried about these guys. Their proportions are a little bit off. They do seem to be going in the right direction, though. You can see we have the removable face masks here, or at least they're removable at this stage in their development. Uh, but the details are there for the most part, but some parts of them just look a little bit strange, so I'm a little worried about that. We're going to have to wait and see how it turns out, though. I think they have the potential, and since they're talking about doing Street Fighter next, we have to kind of hope that these guys know what they're doing. Uh, again, they look like they could end up being really good, but it could easily go the other way, so let's just keep our fingers crossed. One thing that is promising, though, is this guy. He is chock full of articulation, has all kinds of paintwork, and just looks like they poured effort into it, so I'm really excited to see how this line does end up turning out. Uh, if this guy is any indication, then we don't have too much to worry about. It's going to be a fantastic series of figures. Next thing I want to look at is the Figma Link, which is the most feminine version of Link we've ever seen, and this figure looks even more feminine than it should, so I can't say I'm particularly excited. And right next to him is the Skyward Sword version of Link. It's a statue to larger scale, but it just drives home the fact that this new Figma Link is particularly small and particularly effeminate, and I just... I don't know. I don't know why we can't get an OOT Link. That's what we need. At least Majora's Mask something, not this one for me. I mean, I'll get it, but I'm not excited. Here we have Yami Yugi, which I have no idea anything about other than he is from Yu-Gi-Oh! So all of you Yu-Gi-Oh! fans, this figure looks really good, so be excited for that. That's all I can tell you. And then lastly from Figma, we have the Motoko Kusanagi figure, which I'm psyched for. It looks really good, even though it's mostly all black. It looks like it's going to have a nice general appeal to it, so I'm psyched. Here we have the Triforce Batman Arkham Origins Deathstroke helmet display piece, which is just fantastic. It's one-to-one -one scale, and it looks like it came right out of a real-life thing, even though it came out of a game. And here we have Black Mask. Also, again, these, are guys, these guys are just doing a really good job with these one-to-one -one scale things. They look absolutely amazing. The Batman 
is particularly good. I'm a little bit biased, but it just, it's such a cool piece with that clear mouth and just the display, everything is so nice about it. I'm really pleased with how that turned out. Here we have the Arkham Knight Batman statue and like that dual tone kind of thing. It's kind of a cool piece. I uh, hadn't seen that before, so I was kind of cool. It was kind of cool to see that. The Evolve figures or statues from them are just really fantastic. This one's all painted up, so it looks cool. But it's not nearly as cool as the one that's not painted because the one that's not painted is about twice as big. This thing stood like, I don't know, four and a half feet tall, something like that. Really, really impressive. Very cool looking. I could never afford it, but it still is a cool piece. They also had some Borderlands guns on display. So we have two different ones from Moxie. I'm not sure which is which. I never paid that much attention to her guns because I didn't actually like them in game. But the details on these things are great. You can see they put a lot of effort into them, so it's really nice. And of course, they had to also make the Infinity Pistol, which is, you know, a fan favorite. So obviously they're going to make one of those. Unfortunately, it's not painted up yet, but it does look like it's going to be a nice piece. Uh, they had a lot of statues for the various games, and the Mirror's Edge one I thought was a particularly nice one with that piece of glass in the middle and then the two figures on both sides. Just very cool looking, nice piece. Of course we had to have Halo, so those are the two uh, plasma rifles, which look really cool and they're awesomely big and heavy. I actually held both of them and they're like 40 pounds each, so don't get them and use them for cosplay, it won't work. They, they showed off their 1 to 1 scale Agent, or Agent Lock, Spartan Lock and, uh, and Spartan Kelly helmets, which look absolutely fantastic it's another thing i don't know if i'll be able to afford but boy would i like to these things looked so cool i could just imagine having osiris and blue team on a display that'd be so nice this is the limited collector's edition statue from halo 5 it looks really good in person i have to say it looks way better in person than it does in photos and things so if you're on the fence go get it you'll like it and here's a photo i couldn't show until today since the console came out and everything yesterday you do get an agent lock head in the back of the statue so if you want to take his helmet off you can do that and then lastly we have the mega blocks display which had this really cool mosaic of master chief with all the minifigures i thought that was just an awesome idea and it turned out really well and they had on display for the first time the Halo Heroes figures, which are basically little collectible minifigures from Mega Bloks, but they're high paint app, have their own little bases with their names on them and highly detailed weapons. You can see here we get Buck and just a variety of named characters and some non-named characters, but they have extra paint applications and just a little bit extra effort and detail went into these. And, and they just did a really, really good job. In the next couple photos, I'll show you some close-up details on two of the figures that are my favorites. I just can't get over the size of these figures, the amount of detail. So here's the Oceanic. Look at the armor pattern and the pattern on the BR. It's just so much for such a tiny figure. It's really, really impressive. I think the most impressive thing out of all of these is the weapon detail for this guy right here, for this scout. Look at the end of that AR. That's like a one and a quarter inch weapon, roughly, and they put all that detail in there. It's really impressive. And then they showed at the collector block party the uh, the spirit for the first time, which is just an incredible piece. It looks so nice. Uh, I can't wait to see that in person outside of a display case to actually get my hands on it. It's definitely going to be a piece for Halo collectors to pick up. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my upcoming figure reviews, custom figures, and other good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.